All right, in this video, we are going to display appropriate error messages when a form field is invalid. Trust me, with the understanding we have from the previous video, this is going to be pretty straightforward. The name field in our example is a required field. So when the form field is invalid, we need to display the error message, name is required. Let's add that message in the HTML. So in VS code in app.component.html, right after the input element, I'm going to add a small tag with the error message name is required. Now, if I save this, we can see the message in the browser name is required. Of course, we want this message to be shown only when the form field is invalid. So let's add the conditions with the ng model properties. We can use either ng if or class binding. But the valid state might toggle so often that it's better to deal with the display property. I will of course show how to use both of them. For class binding, we will use the class d-none which is a bootstrap for class for setting the display property to none. The condition though is the inverse of what we used in the last video. So within the small tag, class binding, so square brackets, class followed by a dot followed by the class that we want to apply. That is d hyphen none. Now the condition is going to be name dot valid or name dot untouched. So do not show the error message if the form control is valid or hasn't been touched. If you take a look at the browser, you can see that initially it's hidden. If I clear out the text and navigate away, the message appears. So we are displaying the error message appropriately. The last thing is to add a class that makes the message appear like an error message. For that purpose, we are going to use the class text danger, again from Bootstrap 4. So class is equal to text danger. Now, if you take a look at the browser, clear out the form field, tab away, and you can see that the message really starts to look like an error message. Name is required. All right, to make sure we really get this, let's do the same for the phone number field. We're going to go back to VS Code for the phone number field. First, let's add a small tag with the message phone number must be 10 digits. Then the class binding with the ng model properties class dot d hyphen none is equal to phone dot valid or phone dot untouched. And finally, at the styling, class is equal to text danger. Let's save this and take a look at the browser. So you can see that the error message is hidden right now. Remove a few digits and tab out. You can see the error message. Phone number must be 10 digits. Add them back and the message disappears. Displaying error messages is as simple as that. Now we might run into scenarios where we have more than one validation happening on a form field. For example, the phone number control can have the required validation in addition to the pattern validation. To keep it simple, we can change the error message to phone number is required and must be 10 digits. This message will satisfy both the conditions. Let's quickly test this out. Go back to VS Code, add the required attribute, and then change the message to phone number is required and must be 10 digits. Save this. Go back to the browser. You can see that initially there is no error message. 
remove a couple of digits and tab out, you can see the error message phone number is required and must be 10 digits. Remove it completely, you still have the error message. And I start filling it in and the error message stays till the 10 digits are entered. So pretty easy to deal with multiple validations. However, if you want to go the extra mile with user experience and be spot on with your error messages, that can be done as well. And for that, we are going to use the errors property on the ng model. Let's see how. First, I'm going to comment out the existing error message. Next, add a div tag. And this div tag will be conditionally rendered based on whether the phone number field has an error or not. And for that, we use the ngif directive along with the ngmodel properties. So to the div tag, ngif is equal to phone.errors and phone.invalid or phone.touched. So if the phone field has errors and the phone state is invalid or the phone state has been visited, only then render this div tag. Within the div tag, we create separate error messages. And you can see that the first message is phone number is required. And then similarly, the second message phone number must be 10 digits. And the way we can decide what has to be shown is using errors property on ng model. For the first case, ngf is equal to phone dot errors dot required. So if the required attribute validation is happening, display this error message. In the next message, phone dot errors dot pattern. If the pattern validation is being applied, display this particular error message. Now, if you take a look at the browser, I remove a digit, you can see that it only displays the pattern validation error. And when I clear out the text, the required validation message is displayed. Phone number is required. So using the errors object, you can display specific error messages. That's pretty much it about displaying error messages in template driven forms. For single validation rules, create an element that contains the error message. Conditionally display the message based on the state of the form field. Apply the appropriate style to the error message. For multiple validation rules, create a block that gets rendered only if the errors object is defined and the field is invalid or visited. Within that block, create separate error messages based on the validation that is being applied. And that can be accessed using the errors property. For practice, try to apply a similar validation on the email field and you should be in a really good position. All right, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.